Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's about 6 o'clock in the morning, and it is going to be a great day around here. I'm excited about all the things that the Lord is doing. The weather's amazing. It's beautiful outside. It's a full moon, and uh, we're in the midst of just a beautiful bird migration here on the river in North Platte, Nebraska, and it's lovely. I hope you're great wherever you are. We've had a lot going on lately, um, a lot of challenges. There's, um, of course, the you know, the world's kind of on fire. There's there's conflict in Europe, and there's all kinds of things to be praying about. Um, in the United States, there's 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 stress and turmoil, and people are worried about the government, and all kinds of things are happening. And I just want to give you a minute today to to think about your thinking. Okay, we're always talking about you can't change your life until you change your mind, and that's true. And I've got self brain surgery tip number twenty five for you today. Remember, I did thirty one of these self brain surgery tips on Twitter a while back, and they were pretty popular. I'm going to put them all together in a single post sometime for you. Um, but I've been just doing these little short episodes of self brain surgery, and here's number twenty five. It takes the same amount of work to be in a bad mood as it does to be in a good mood, and both are decisions. Listen to that again. It takes the same amount of work to be in a bad mood as it does to be in a good mood, and both are decisions. Here's the thing, my friend. God has given humans a unique neurological ability that no other species has called selective attention. As sort of an announcement, I've been honored to um, have an opportunity to have a recurring 90-second encouraging radio spot on MyBridge Radio in Nebraska. It's going to start soon. We've already recorded the first one. There's 155,000 or so daily listeners, and once it's available, I'll send you the link so you can listen online too. But these are going to be recurring little short uh, encouraging self-brain surgery tips basically. And the first one is about selective attention. I won't spoil it for you here, but that's what I chose to, to use for, to introduce the topic of self-brain surgery to the Nebraska radio community. It takes the same amount of work to be in a bad mood as it does to be in a good mood, and they're both decisions. Here's what I mean by that. You have the ability, the God-given ability, to engage your frontal lobe and your, and your brain to select what you will pay attention to. Now, I watch Harvey and Lewis a lot, my dogs. You hear me talk about them a lot. When they get outside and they get on a gopher or they get on a mole or they smell something, they start digging or start hunting a mouse, they cannot turn their brain off and stop going after that thing. And sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes they're in a, chasing a car or something and I've got to shock them with their collars to make them stop. And it takes a lot sometimes of pain to get them to turn their brain off of the thing that they're fixed on. And that's because they don't have selective attention. They, they don't have the ability to stop thinking about the thing that, they're, that their entire brain is telling them is most important right now. And it takes a lot to, to change their minds, right? They can't change their lives until they change their minds either. But if, if they're out there digging and we drag them in and finally get them inside and calm them down, give them a treat or give them something to eat and give them a bath and get them on the couch and we watch them TV, it's amazing how often three or four hours will go by. And as soon as they need to go outside to go to the bathroom again, they'll run right back to that same spot and start digging again. Right back to the same thing. Their brain has paused, but when they get that first smell or that first scene of outside, they go right back to the same situation. They cannot switch their brain from one thing to another. Now, some people, all of us really at times, have a problem where we forget or we don't know that we have selective attention. We think that events or circumstances or other people can force us to think and feel certain things. I have a person that I love who occasionally will say something like this, boy, you better not wake me up early. Don't make a loud noise and wake me up or I'll be in a bad mood all day. I've heard women say of that of their husbands, gosh, boy, you don't want to get, you don't want to get him up on the wrong side of the bed or the whole day is going to be downhill from there. That is a selective attention problem. That's where you think that if something happens at a certain point in your day, that you are fated to have the rest of your day be messed up. You're going to be in a bad mood. You're going to be grumpy. You're going to be angry. You're going to you know, be sleepy or whatever. That That's because you have not learned or you have forgotten, perhaps, that you have the ability to change trains. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you a metaphor here. I was thinking about this the other day. We were watching some show. I think it was Elementary. And somebody was on a subway in New York City. And in the subway, you can get on a train and you can ride as far as you want to go to the end of the line. Or you can get off at the next stop and get on another train and go somewhere else entirely. 
right? You can just you can just make a decision that I'm going to get off this train and get on to that train. But if you don't, if you get busy reading your paper or reading your iPad or listening to music or fall asleep, you can actually ride that train as far as it'll go until it's over and you wake up somewhere you didn't intend to go, right? But you have the ability always to just change trains. And that's very much like what it's what happens when you decide to change your stream of thought, when you decide to engage selective attention. You can change trains and you can change your entire emotional state. You can change your entire line of thinking. That'll change the, the brain chemistry inside your head. It'll change what your what your neurons are doing. It'll change how your heart beats. It'll change everything about your physiology. If you decide that you are going to take control of your mental state and not let emotion and circumstance drive it like reflexes like Harvey and Lewis do. I was thinking about this the other day when I heard a, a certain song, an old song by James Taylor called Song for You Far Away. I'll play it for you. I'll play it for you now, actually. This is James Taylor's Song for You Far Away. A musical number for you now. <laughs> God only knows how they do it One then another then back again Something else putting through it Me, I've been watching more than 15 years And it hasn't changed a bit, no, no People keep talking about a different life Never seem to fail. This is a song for you. It's kind of a sad song to me. It's, he's singing to somebody who's far away. And every time I hear that now, I think about Mitch. And I can let that music, that kind of melancholy tune, take me down this rabbit hole. I wrote about that in my new book, this sort of rabbit hole staircase down into the abyss where where I'm, I'm going down and I start thinking all the thoughts about losing Mitch and what would he have been like now at 28 and and what would his family be like and, and it's so sad that he never got to have kids and it's so terrible that I never get to hold my boy again and and all the things I wish I had said or done or hadn't done and I can just go down in that hole and James Taylor can just lead me down there and before you know it I'm, I'm off in a train of thought and it's been an hour and I'm and I'm just sitting there thinking sad thoughts or I can do something different. I can say, yeah, that song reminds me of Mitch, and boy, he was a good kid, and I remember that time we went to the beach, and, and I can and I can 
change the direction of that thought process and I can find some place to redeem it and bring it back into the light and I can go on about my day and have a positive memory of my beautiful son instead of being down in the abyss. Right? I can engage selective attention. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of scripture. Philippians chapter 4 is, the, is kind of the textbook of the Bible on self-brain surgery. In context, Paul the Apostle wrote this book in a Roman prison. He was in jail. And we're not talking about a white-collar prison in Connecticut where he had exercise time and got to read the paper and had a nice meal. This is a Roman prison. He's chained to the ground in bars, on probably on a dirt floor, probably with murderers and rapists and all kinds of other terrible things happening around him. And yet he can write this in, in Philippians chapter 4. He can say, starting in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. He's in, he's in a Roman prison. He could be executed. He could be flogged any minute. He could be gang raped by the, by the people in there. He's saying, rejoice. Don't be anxious. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's the mechanism of self-brain surgery. You pray, you meditate, you lay it before God, you give it to somebody bigger than you. And the peace of God, Paul says, which transcends all understanding. You can't understand it, but he's going to do it. The peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Your heart and your mind, friend, need guarding. Because if you don't guard them, your brain will take them down a rabbit trail. Your brain will forget that you have selective attention and you'll go down the hole like I do sometimes with Mitch. And he says, finally, and brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Here's the deal, friend. You're going to spend your time thinking about something. And that something that you think is going to put you on a train that takes you somewhere. And where you end up is dependent on either where the train's going or whether you decide to change trains or not. And it is completely your choice. Self-brain surgery tip number 25, it takes the same amount of work to be in a bad mood as it does to be in a good mood, and both are decisions. That's just the tip of the iceberg about this ability to select your attention. There's a famous attention test. Daniel Simons and Christopher Schaubert did it. It's on YouTube. I'll put a link in there. And it shows, it says, count how many times the players in white pass the basketball. And it shows this group of kids. There's some are in black shirts and some are in white shirts. And they're all they're dribbling a basketball around, moving around in circles. And they're passing the ball to each other. And the, and the test is you're supposed to pay attention to how many times the players in white jerseys pass the ball to each other. And it's just a minute or two. And you can count how many times they pass, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but at the end it says how many times did they pass the ball, and you answer it, and, you, and you're either correct or incorrect. And then it asks you a question, but did you notice something else? There was something else happening during that time. And if you're focused completely on the white players, you'll miss the thing that's also happening in the scene. And so check it out. I'll, 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 I guess I will spoil it. You've probably already seen it. But halfway through the video, when you're, when you're watching these players pass the ball, a guy in a gorilla suit walks out, and he stands in the middle of the screen, jumping up and down, waving his arms, and then he walks off stage. And it's amazing. People who have not seen that before or have not been exposed to that, a tremendous percentage of people never notice that gorilla walking by. They're so focused on the white players passing the ball, the players in white jerseys passing the ball. I'm sorry about my voice this morning, by the way. A little frog in my throat, I can't quite clear. But so they, they, people focus in on the task and they miss something else that's out there that's right in front of them. And that's the problem. If you don't learn how to engage selective attention, if you don't learn how to zoom out or zoom in or pay attention to other things, you can miss some great things in your life. If you're grumpy all day because somebody woke you up early, then you'll miss somebody else who's trying to be sweet to you or your wife's made you breakfast, but you're in too bad of a mood to enjoy it, right? You, you don't pay attention and you miss the gorilla right in front of you. You miss the opportunities to, to witness or help other people. You miss Jesus standing right in front of you saying, hey, trade those sorrows for something else. Self-brain surgery tip number 25, friend. It takes the same amount of work to be in a bad mood as it does to be in a good mood, and both are decisions. You can change trains. You don't have to ride it to the end of the line. You have the gift of selective attention, and you can do it. Check out Philippians 4, 
check out uh, the song I'm about to play for you is Trading My Sorrows. I thought the Daryl Evans old song, Trading My Sorrows, is, is a great example of this. You can choose to have these sorrows and just sit with them like I do sometimes when Mitch just it overwhelms me. Or you can trade them for something else, the joy of the Lord. You can you can let the, the, the beauty come from ashes as he promises he will do for you. You just have to decide to change your mind. And to do that, my friend, you have to start today. Oh! 